So here once again um, I am with Professor Keith from University of Sussex and he is a professor in education planning and he is an expert in this field and uh, uh, I have with of course Professor Hamid with me. The issue today we are going to discuss is the misuse of funds in public sector in Pakistan. As we know that this year uh, our education budget has almost equaled the military budget in Pakistan. But we see that the public sector is on the decline and the government is actually privatizing public schools and trying to add private sector in the public sector to ensure that enrollment is coming. So I want to ask Professor Keith that what do you think are the measures to be taken to ensure the proper use of money in public sector? Yeah, I can't comment on detail on the situation in Pakistan uh, because I'm not working on it at this moment. However, I can say something about public financing and about uh, privatisation. So the public financing and education system, of course, depends on the political will of a government to provide services to its people. Um, it's a fact of life that you cannot have every child that goes to school unless you have public finance of schools. Uh, in a country like Pakistan, um, privately financed schooling probably could include 40 to 50 percent of the, of the population at primary school level, and much less than that secondary school level because the costs are higher. So anything beyond that, any, any children who go attend, uh, will have to be publicly financed. Of course, that public finance could be given to private providers, uh, but the question is, why would you do that? And why would you have that as a long term aim? Yeah, I'm not sure. Thank you. So, um, Professor Hamid, uh, as, uh, as Professor Keith said, that uh, although the Punjab Education Foundation is financing uh, private sector to uh, get them, uh, get the public sector students enrolled over there, but as he said, that it is not a long term aim and it is not a long term objective. So, what do you think shall be done to ensure that the, that the public sector can actually uh, help itself stand in front of the private sector in Pakistan? I think uh, the world uh, big powers of rich countries, they are uh, paying much attention on the education of Pakistan, okay. so that they, it can be improved. And the, 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 the thing which disturbs them is that, you know, we have out of school children, six million, and, you know, and the spending on, on the education has a lot of questions. Uh, we have uh, recently experienced of the Punjab Education Foundation and what Punjab Education is doing is uh, distributing money to the private sector so that they can share the burden, the global burden of education. Uh, but matter of fact is that where they go, that instrument weakens the public sector schools. So the enrollment in the public schools, they, you know, they, they start lowering and, you know, they yeah. have, uh, and yeah. uh, that, that's a terrible thing, you know, I think, as a Christian, I can feel that. Yeah. Moreover, I don't think that any private sector, you know, solution can solve the problem, as he mm. was saying that, you know, it's a basic responsibility of the state and the political will has to be there. There, was, yeah. there, I mean, there were several questions to ask. Um, as an outsider who's not been directly involved in your story. The Pakistan Educa the Punjab Education Foundation dates back to, I think, the 1990s. Yes. Um, it's not new. Yes. Uh, it has a historic record. Yes. Um, if you want to judge its impact, then look at the 20 years. Um, if there are indeed, uh, as you say, half the, half the children out of school by grade six and certainly by grade nine, um, that this is because the Pakistan Education, the Punjab Education Foundation wasn't effective in the past. Yes, it was. So why, why would you pour more money into it um, if its historic track record was not that good? It may be that it has improved its performance recently, I don't yeah. know. Um, the data on that is contested, I do know that, um, because it comes from different sources. And um, if it's coming uh, from people who have a conflict of interest, because they have an interest in the money. Mm -hmm. Um, then it, sh it shouldn't be. It should be coming from an independent source. And the Punjab government figures don't show the kind of growth that the Pakistan Education Foundation itself claims. So I don't know what, what the situation is. Um, but I think everybody agrees that a lot of children still don't complete grade six or grade nine. 
Um, and the problem is that the financing that you were talking about that goes to the Punjab Education Foundation could, of course, simply go to the Punjab government to finance the public schools. So why doesn't it? Um, uh, 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 if the proposition is somehow that public schools are more corrupt or that more money goes missing in, in the Punjab Education Foundation, then the answer is obvious. It is fix the system. In, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, but there are other there are other aspects of this story that um, people should uh, think about. Um, uh, first of all, whether it's sustainable or not. If the if the PEF is receiving substantial external finance, how long would this last? Um, five years, ten years, or forever? Yeah. If the plan is for it to last forever, it's a very poor plan. So there ha would have to be a plan for the financing to be taken over from domestic revenue, um, fr from the uh, Punjab uh, 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 financial base, or from the Pakistani financial base, but uh, uh, more likely from the from the province, because it's one of the richest provinces. Yes. Um, so the long in the long term, the school system has to be financed from domestic revenue. You have to collect tax. So without labouring the point, Pakistan in general devotes not much more than 2% of GDP to education, to the education budget. This is simply too small to universalise access, and unless or until uh, there's more political will to provide the financial resources to educate all the children in Pakistan, they won't be educated. And if they are being educated with large amounts of money from the outside, it's fragile. It's volatile. And when people like you, they'll give you money, and when people don't like you, they might stop. Thank you very much, and that is a very much a valid point that Professor Keith, you want to say something, Professor Keith? Well, I'm saying that uh, it's true that uh, you know, the foundation is what is just the United States, that's true. But recently they have this new instrument called the they have improved the quality of it. You know that uh, our university has conducted the quality of its test on behalf of the foundation. And I know what's going on, you know, with papers, what people soon are doing. Yeah. But I'm saying that, you know, at some point of point, something is missing. I'm, I, I personally know that World Bank or the effort in both institutions are doing great. And they have also improved their instrument to, to check the transparency of the funding. But I think uh, uh, the link between different activities going on, like what you have to submission, school going on, I think they, they don't really keep following, they don't they seriously follow the, the track, all track, all along the line. What happens is that the developers come in and they have then in their own instrument to satisfy people, and, you know, they have language, they have everything, and they can satisfy the people. And so I think he's right, but the, uh, that's not for responsibility. And we, we should, academician, professional, we should take that responsibility. And uh, but it's, it's such a big, huge thing. And you are basically you know, like fighting with the government or fighting with the big mm -hmm. positions. Uh, it's, uh, it's beyond the limits mm -hmm. of the universities. But we are doing that. But I think uh, he knows some information. I don't know. Yes. And there must well, be you know a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think that, that type of exchange will be very fruitful. Yes. If we have chance to sit together. And what he or other people over there, we can, they know, and what we know about the yeah, one, one, I mean, one, uh, two or three things I would say about financing public systems. Um, the objective must be to create a system which is sustainable, which can live within its means and is fit for purpose. Um, so that means uh, that you have to collect enough revenue to finance public services. This is obvious. If you don't collect enough, then, then you can't provide the services, number one. Number two, it's a political choice as to whether you deliver those services directly by the state with public sector employees employed under whatever conditions that they have, or whether you subcontract that to the private sector. But if you've subcontracted to the private sector, then you must have a regulatory system that ensures that people do what they say. The private sector has no particular reason to behave equitably. He has no reason at all to go places where the poorest people live unless it's paid to do so. It has no reason to run um, an effective and efficient system unless it's regulated in a way which makes sure that this happens. Um, I, my understanding, but I may be wrong, is that most of the primary schooling uh, that's being delivered in Punjab is in, in, in 
private schools is uh, individual proprietors owning separate single schools uh, rather than chain systems. Anybody who knows anything about private education knows that those people are not going to make a lot of money. They will only make money if they have chain systems. At least if the money goes to the, I go to the chain, they go to the schools. Yeah, but if it's, an, if it's a small individual school with uh, 200 children or whatever, you might call it a subsistence school. It's, not, it's, it's going to make enough money to pay people to run it, but it's not going to make serious profit. It's going to be fragmented. It's never going to be the best because it doesn't have scale. Um, it, uh, it's never going to be efficient because it doesn't have scale. Um, and um, whether or not it actually competes with any other school depends on where it is. In many rural places, there is only one school, or maybe there are two. But there aren't ten. People are not choosing between ten schools. The theory of competition and choice, which suggests that leads to efficiency, is misleading. The the natural instinct of uh, private sector running businesses is to monopolise, not to reduce prices. Yes. And so you, unless unless the fees are regulated, um, this is what may happen. And lastly, on this subject, if these schools really are private in the sense of being financed at least in part from fees, from fees that children pay, whether this is um, official or unofficial fees, because we know a lot of schools in systems that have legislation for free education, the schools are charging children as well. If, if this is true, then it's very simple. Any, any fee payment that a household on or below the poverty line makes, makes that household poorer. So it increases poverty as soon as you have a basic service, um, basic public good being provided uh, for a price, uh, which is charged to the household, it's making the household poorer. This is not how you reduce poverty. Thank you. Uh, Professor Keith has actually pointed out that there is a dire need of uh, creating a system that is self-sufficient and sustainable and uh, uh, the higher dependence on foreign, don uh, foreign donations like the Punjab Education Foundation these days is, he says that it is not a, a long-term project to be followed. He says that if the government is uh, going to um, fund the private, you know, private schools uh, to cater the out-of-school children, there is a dire need that the government shall fund these schools with, from its own budget, uh, whether by taxing it or by releasing more money from its budget for the education. Thank you very much, Professor Keith. If I can just uh, clarify, um, what I'm saying is that it must be the case that in the medium term there is a plan for the system to be financed from domestic revenue. It's perfectly possible that in the short term you can demonstrate with outside money, um, that there's a better way of doing things, that uh, there's a way of organising the school system that's more efficient and effective. But you should not do that unless you have a plan to exit. Otherwise you create dependence yes. and you also create systemic risk because when you do leave, when you pull the plug, things stop. That is systemic risk and that is a risk with high levels of external support because projects come and projects go. It's a risk with high levels of private sector provision because you have no guarantee ultimately that the people who finance the private sector commission will not decide that their business lies elsewhere and move their operation to some other place or some other sector. Uh, the private sector will, will seek returns on its capital. So if there's better things to do with money, they'll stop running schools and, and do something else. It's to be a food. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor Keith, and uh, okay, uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.